Hello my soccer universe. As announced, I'm gonna do something different today. I decided that uh, while we are still on COVID break and you know, as I have this wonderful background with many players numbers, how about starting the My Soccer Universe Hall of Fame? And doing so, I was thinking, yeah, I will definitely induct first player that I will be that will be announced soon um, my favorite players but I want to keep it more balanced in a way because my favorite players are also with my favorite teams I for each favorite player I want to induct another player that I maybe didn't uh, have that m as much liking um, but was also really important to that period so uh, that is one part that I want to do so it should be only every other player should be favorite maybe even only every third because being from Austria I also want to give players from Austria and especially from Lusk a little bit more light uh, in this series and so I want to do that as well so yeah that's kind of the idea behind uh, this Hall of Fame and I surely will put some coaches in there at a time, uh, from time to time too. But I want to start with the idols and while I have a lot of Maldini jerseys here, if you ask me, who was my first idol? He played for AC Milan, he also played for Ajax and he played for the Dutch national team, none other than Marco van Basten and how much I wish I would have on this wonderful 1991 Milan jersey I would have a number 9 on there this would be the ultimate I am still dreaming of having a true from Boston jersey not only Milan but the one that he wore in 1988 at, in the Euros that would be number 12 I mean couldn't choose a better tribute to him he truly was my first idol. I think everyone in my class back then uh, were huge Milan fans. I mean, all the soccer people were Milan fans, I should say. And Val Ruth Hewlett definitely was the more uh, player that stuck more in your memory, especially when you're in, you know, around 10, 12 years old. But everyone said Marco van Basten, Marco van Basten, Marco van Basten and it quickly became apparent that he is the star let's quickly go very briefly through his career i mean uh he was born on october 31st my father's birthday as well in 1964 a little bit after my father uh and he got to ajax as a 16 year old in the 81 82 season and that's the one thing that is so mind-boggling about van bust that everything he did he did in a not a relative not necessarily a short span but relatively young in his career we'll talk about the ending of his career in a bit he came on in his first game he substituted he came on as a substitute for none other than johan cruyff and he scored on his debut uh, to me, that's in the league, this is the most wonderful story. He became a veritable threat. I mean, already in his second season, this is a 17-year-old, he scored in the league 9 goals in 20 appearances, a total of 13 in 25. He became the Dutch top scorer in the next four seasons. Um, I think once even winning the silver boot, if not the golden boot in there, uh, he was simply amazing for Ajax and all, at a very very young age I mean as a 16 year old he started 17 18 19 20 21 year old I mean he was still in his early 20s when he not only had scored the winning goal and I think at, at the age of 20 21 the winning goal for Ajax against Lok Leipzig uh, in the European Cup Winners Cup final um, but he won all these accolades uh, in the Dutch league already at such a young age he had in league appearances an incredible 128 goals in 133 games this is the prodigy that he was and he is still considered by many who watched soccer in the 80s and 90s maybe people that are a little bit older than i because they really could uh, see him although at the time you didn't have wall-to-wall -wall soccer as you have now you saw them at select games and if you wanted to see ajax uh, you probably had to watch ajax in the stadium or if you wanted to watch milan most of the time you didn't see milan live you saw only the huge games 
Uh, I think the, uh, another really crazy statistic is that in his last season for Ajax, he had 43 appearances and 43 goals. He finished 172 games for Ajax with 152 goals. And that in an age from 16 to 21. Absolutely amazing. It was clear he was ready for the big time. And Milan, I read you in my book review, Milan stepped in. They needed him. They needed a star. Together with Ruth Hüllit and Frank Reichert, he formed the fam fabled uh, Dutch trio. And Milan, first season, was not that great. I mean, they won the championship there, but for him personally, he had 19 uh, games, 8 goals, and it was a lot of injuries. And this was the side turn from Batson's career was plagued by injuries as soon as he basically stepped foot in Italy. Uh, this didn't prevent him though from scoring a tons of goals for Milan and it was actually, actually the next few seasons that he was basically in his prime. The good thing is uh, coming off from injury he went to the Euros um, and had a fabulous tournament although he was not the starter from the beginning. He came initially on a substitute only but then he scored a hat-trick against England. He scored in typically from Boston fashion the win against Germany in the semi-final uh, where he was marked by Jürgen Kohler who was basically his nemesis but they both boost each other the best defender almost of his generation against the best striker of his generation. Uh, they had great duels over the years. This is one of the defining things about von Basten's career are his duels with Jürgen Kohler. He scored that one where he just gets to it and this is the winner and then he scores also the most legendary goal probably of, of his career, this incredible volley in the final. I have to say I don't remember that, f I, s I know I saw that final, I remember Ruth Hüllit playing, I think I remember and this was probably my, I want to say my third ever soccer game that I saw. I remember Ruth Hüllit scoring that one, although I mean I more remember him playing, I remember the Dutch winning and I remember seeing this crazy jersey, I'm not sure if I saw, I remember that when we had, when this final was on that we actually had visitors from my um, father's friends and it was kind of on but no one was really attentively watching, I think my father was, ah yeah here we have a European championship final we should put this on and yeah we saw a little a little bit but he scored this amazing goal I think it was a cross by Van den Burg. Uh now whoever white cross in and he was it from impossible angle into the goal at the Olympic Stadium in Munich handing the Dutch their only international title so far. And then with Milan he continued where he left off at that tournament, which were actually his only five goals that he scored for the Netherlands uh, in that year. Um, he won in 89-90, he won the Capo Cannoniere, the top scorer in uh, Serie A, a title that he would win two more times. Uh, no, one more time uh, in 91-92, which probably was his best season in Italy. This was the season where you know, uh, Fabio Capello had come in for Arrigo Sacchi and in his first year of uh, Milan was this free scoring team, unbeaten champ champions, scoring crazy goals and for Boston scored 25, which was the highest total in a long time in Italy. Scoring in Italy even just uh, 15 goals or 10 goals was a big achievement. He scored 20, 25 at that time. Uh, also the 19 where he won the Capo Cannoniere was the second time he scored 19 goals and he did that only in 26 games in the league. But crazily enough, I mean he did not have a good World Cup. Uh, the Euros in 92 were his second best joint. This was actually the, the first time that I really actively saw from Boston and I have to say um, he had an unlucky game against the uh, CIS, the Community of Independent States. Yeah successor of the USSR, he had an outstanding game, the whole Dutch team had an outstanding game against Germany and then uh, the Denmark game, I still was one of the definitely crazier ones where Denmark outplayed the Dutch, although the Dutch were big favorites at the time and then one of the best penalty takers of his time, I think he had, he missed in his whole home home call career, took over 50 penalties, he only missed three and the most famous miss was when his penalty was saved uh, by Peter Schmeichel. 
and that led to the Dutch being eliminated. I assure you, if the Dutch would have won the semi-final, they would have won another trophy. They were, from what I can tell, the best team. Not the best story, but they were the best team at that tour, 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 tournament. Uh, the way that they outplayed Germany in that group game uh, is still one of my favorite displays of a Dutch team. It was a was war. This was the one really outstandingly great game. But the other one probably being that semi-final, the Netherlands against Denmark. All right. Then his career winds down. I mean, those Euros were kind of his uh, last big showing. He had frequently uh, problems with his knees, meniscus. His meniscus uh, tendon is basically gone by now. Uh, his season 92-993, although he scored uh, four goals in the Champions League, the new Champions League. Uh, he was the first four goal scorer there uh, with a wonderful overhead bicycle kick. But injuries kept him out of the game and he returned only for the end of the season when Milan again won the title. But again, the, the Invincibles kind of were fading out and his last ever game was this um, yeah first true Champions League final against Marseille. And you know, I at the time didn't really realize it that way for me. I was thinking, yeah, what happens to Willoughby still be for Milo Fanny van Basten and the other Dutch players are not, are, are not there, but I remember that final, he was a no-show because he was clearly uh, injured, he was hard marked. The I think Basil Bolli actually fouled him and he was substituted and that was the last time we saw Van Basten. He missed the World Cup, he never scored a World Cup goal. Uh, and in 95 he retired. He even missed the great uh, European Cup final. I mean, I have a picture of him where he's in the background celebrating as part of the squad, but he wasn't playing anymore. Uh, and at the age of 28, his career was done at 28. Unbelievable, to be honest. Um, he retired, he said he will never become a manager, and his, man his managerial career, yes, he had a good spell, uh, I think, with, with the Dutch. The uh, World Cup 2006 came too early in 2008. The Dutch were sensational, at least at the beginning of the tournament. Then he got outsmarted by Hugh Seeding, and then the rest of his career is not too much to talk home about. Uh, his coach, coaching at, at, at the moment, he is a technical director at FIFA, which is a high ranking role, and I think he has quite some impact there. If you ask coaches and fellow players, they will tell you that he is one of the most complete strikers that you've ever seen. Um, I think the player that I would compare him most with, although he was, yeah, current player is Zlatan Ibrahimovic. A tall player, technically gifted, always acrobatic, very strong, a very strong physical presence. Uh, and also having a good view of the field. He could assist as well as score. He could anticipate better than others. He played mostly a central striker, but in Milan's 1990 European Cup triumph, he gave the assist to Frank Wackert, for instance, a, a wonderful assist. Uh, many say, many say that Maradona might have been the more gifted player, but the more dangerous player during that period to play against was Van Basten, because he could do it all. You, he was fast, he was physically, he was technically gifted. And one legacy, F, beside all the stuff that I'm telling you now, is that it has been determined that his career probably cut short by many tackles from behind. Although he was a physical player, he did not shy away from uh, fouling as well. But those tackles from, from, from behind did it on his knee. And basically, after his retirement, FIFA slowly outlawed is from behind and now it's a red card and you don't have it anymore. He did not have sufficient protection, especially in Serie A. I think I talk about a lot about Van Basten. He is my first idol. I still think he's one of, from whatever I read, he's one of the best players. Uh, an argument could be made, he's probably the second best Dutch player to have ever lived. And with that, Marco Van Basten, you're the first inductee to the My Soccer Universe Hall. Of fame. Until next time, bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, 
here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.